Billions of Wi-Fi devices are flawed, secretly controlling voice assistants, and Clearview AI is basically a privacy dumpster fire. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for March 3rd, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I have got some housekeeping to do real quick. Make sure you get extra perks by signing up to be a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Grab yourself some discounted ThreatWire swag via my online shop during my big moving sale. That's valid until March 4th, which is tomorrow. And stay up to date on the move by checking out my Twitter account, which is at snubs. Next week is the big move, so there won't be an episode posting next Tuesday, but my goal is to have the studio set back up in my new house by the 16th. And now, on to the news. Broadcom and Cypress Wi-Fi chipsets power over a billion devices worldwide, everything from smartphones to laptops to routers and many IoT products. So when a new vulnerability was announced that could allow remote attackers to intercept, decrypt, and snoop on wireless traffic that is transmitted through devices running these chips, I was intrigued. The new vulnerability is called Crook, K-R-00-K, with CVE 2019-15126, and it was reported by antivirus company ESET, or E-S-E-T. It is the basis of a very high severity flaw that resides within those Wi-Fi chips. It disables the encryption key that is used for secure communications to and from these devices, and it affects everything from some iPhones and iPads and Macs, to Amazon's Echoes, Kindles, Samsung Galaxy phones, Raspberry Pi 3s, Xiaomi's Redmi, Google Nexus phones from way back in the day, and some Asus and Huawei Wi-Fi routers. Uh-oh. Now of note, this has not been reported as being used in the wild yet, and the attack will not let an attacker steal your Wi-Fi password, do man-in-the-middle attacks against other devices, and it does not reside in the wireless protocol. It actually resides in the chip implementation of encryption on these devices. So even if you were to change your password on a vulnerable device, it could still be vulnerable. WPA3 is not affected, so newer devices that use the newest security standard will be safe, but WPA2 Personal and WPA2 Enterprise protocols with AES CCMP encryption are vulnerable. It's also important to note that this flaw does not break HTTPS or TLS encryption. The researchers found that when devices get disconnected from an access point, the Wi-Fi chip clears the session key from memory and it sets it to zero. That's normal. The chip inadvertently sends the data frames over the air with an encryption key set to all zeros after that disassociation. That part's not good. So an attacker could kick devices off of APs with deauth attacks. This would allow them to capture data frames like DNS, ARP, ICMP, HTTP, and more packets of data with a vulnerable encryption key. In the case of the ASUS and Huawei routers, an attacker could intercept and decrypt traffic sent to and from these devices from clients that are not vulnerable at all, which could be a major issue if the router never gets updated, which is the case with many since they are usually required to do manual firmware updates. The manufacturers received a coordinated disclosure from ESET and firmware updates and patches are now available for the known vulnerable devices. The researchers recommend patches as soon as you possibly can. A new attack was discovered and shared during the Network and Distributed Systems Security Symposium on February 24th by researchers at Washington University in St. Louis. These researchers found that if within 30 feet away, they could attack mobile devices via voice assistant commands that are entirely inaudible. Dubbed surfing attack, the attack affects iPhones running Siri, as well as Android phones that use Google assistant. They found that instead of using a human voice to issue commands to a voice assistant, they could use ultrasonic waves that are inaudible to human ears, due to the fact that voice assistant programs listen to frequencies that are much wider than a human voice. The microphones inside of these devices are called MEMS microphones, or Microelectromechanical Systems microphones, which have built-in diaphragms that translate sound, or light waves, into electronic signals. The attack requires a 
precise scenario to be completed. This includes software that produces correct waveforms, an ultrasonic generator to transmit the waves, a device that takes electrical signals and turns them into physical vibrations, and a microphone that is hidden that listens to the voice assistant to respond. A full demo using multiple devices can be seen on YouTube, and that's linked below through the articles. The demo shows how the waveforms are transmitted via vibrations in the table that the phone is sitting on, allowing an attacker to force the camera to open and take a photo, they can make calls, or read SMS messages, which could, in theory, allow an attacker to steal SMS data. In this case, think about 2FA codes or other sensitive information. They could even ask the voice assistant to turn Turn down the volume so the user would not notice that their phone is responding to nothing, and then they could respond in on those replies with the hidden microphone. In their study, the researchers found that if a phone was left on a hard surface like a metal, glass, or wood countertop, or a table, the ultrasonic signal could be transmitted through that physical surface up to 30 feet away. But if the surface was covered with something soft, like a tablecloth, then the attack was foiled. This means that the attack could be used in an environment like a restaurant with shared tables, or bar seating, a library, office spaces, etc. etc. Luckily though, the hardware needed for the attack is somewhat obvious, so chances are if you see somebody with the necessary tools in an environment like these, you would probably already be a bit sketched out. Unfortunately, some of the tools could be made by a DIY hacker, so they may not be as noticeable. At this time, the researchers recommend keeping your phone in a pocket or a purse since it does require that it be on a hard service for the attack to actually work. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. My hush puppy perk level patrons brought me some new ones this week. They are awesome. They always send in these amazing pictures of their fur babies. I love them. Keep them coming. And of course, if you want to support Threatwire, but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, check out snubsy.com slash shop. I'll put that link down below to get big discounts on t-shirts, stickers, and even my own digital photography, all of which supports my shows. Thank you so much to everyone who supports this content. I truly appreciate you. I'm just gonna say it right here, Clearview AI is a privacy dumpster fire, in my opinion. This company was found to be providing its tool for facial recognition to law enforcement agencies and governments, including the FBI and the DHS. Clearview AI allows someone to take a picture of a person, upload that photo, and see a slew of public photos of that person, along with links to wherever those photos appear, which could include full names, addresses, and any other available information online. Clearview claims that they scrape data from social media networks to get a backbone of 3 billion images, which is much more than what other facial recognition systems have. Law enforcement has been quoted as using Clearview AI to solve identity theft, shoplifting, child exploitation, murder cases, and a lot more. Now, the app could potentially allow anyone to identify activists at protests or strangers on a public transit. In essence, it's a huge degradation of privacy and could be weaponized or used nefariously by stalkers, foreign governments, or abusers. News surfaced yesterday that Clearview AI not only has clients of the likes of Leo's, which are law enforcement officers, but also is working with AT&T, Verizon, Best Buy, casinos in Vegas, banks, Walmart, and a ton of other brands, according to a BuzzFeed report quoting internal documents. Each of the brands either did not respond to requests for comment, or they just denied working with Clearview altogether. Now, when Clearview AI first surfaced, the New York Times explained that their journalists had several Leos, or those law enforcement officers, run their face through the app. Now, while Clearview AI denied requests to talk to the media, they did contact those Leos asking if they were talking to the press, showing the New York Times that Clearview has access to monitor who law enforcement is searching. These photos are being uploaded to a private company servers, who we later learned may not be protecting them in a secure manner. More on that in a bit. Several tech giants, including Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, sent Clearview cease and desist letters telling the startup to stop scraping images on their platforms. But of course, those letters have been ignored. 
Apple, on the other hand, straight out banned the app from being used on iPhones because it violates the developer agreement, so the account has been suspended. Last week, media agencies started reporting that this company had a data breach on their servers, leaking Clearview's customer list, the number of accounts for each customer, and the number of searches done by each of them. According to Clearview AI, the servers were not accessed, but they patched the flaw. But according to the notification sent to their customers, they did experience unauthorized access, and I'm quoting that, to the entire list of its customers. So where was the list being stored? Because that sounds kind of contradictory. After this happened, Gizmodo also found the app available for download on a publicly facing Amazon web server. So clearly, anyone could technically download the Clearview app if they wanted to. Now, Gizmodo was unable to perform any search requests because they don't have a login for the app because they're not a Clearview customer. Now, it turns out that you can do something to stop them from collecting images of you, which they say is only shared with law enforcement officers who sign up to be customers as one of their clients, but nevertheless, you can email privacy-requests at clearview.ai. I will put that email address down below and request information on data that they have obtained about you, how it was obtained and how it was used. You can also request that they cease to collect any future information on you by opting out of their data collection and request that the data be deleted. But there is a catch. You can do this as a California resident using the CCPA, which just came to pass in January, but they may not comply if you write in from another state. They also ask for your ID to verify your identity with the request. Ugh, it's a huge, huge headache, and I'm definitely going to be following the whole Clearview AI story as it progresses. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to Mark, Garrett, and Kofifi256, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. You are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet from my new fiber-connected home in Colorado in two weeks. I'll see you then. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.